Gamers and game that's what is going on. My name is Tanek127 and welcome back to another video. I'm not going to use face cam for this video or anything because I kind of just want to do, you know, kind of like an old school chill, just, you know, talk to the mic a little bit commentary for this one. This is something that, you know, we need to be just more, you know, laid back and relaxed for. And this is honestly a video I've been contemplating on making for probably four years now and I think with Destiny 2 here you know it's just time that you know I made this video and um and and all that and all that fun stuff so uh I'm definitely gonna put you know a little shout out in this video hey Nova Sarah Angel if you're actually watching this I finally grew the balls and did it man <laughs> and um the reason for that is because um one thing that's been heavily requested I'm gonna tell you guys some backstory on that comment I just made one thing that's been heavily requested on my channel for a long time is destiny content um i have people all the time whenever i make videos even some of my terror videos they ask me you know hey what have you played destiny you should upload some destiny and all that stuff and i just always ignore it because like when i first got ps4 i uploaded a destiny video and this was like when i was in my youtube virgin stages and because of just you know all the controversy that was going on with it the video actually got popular like it was the first time i ever got a video that got like a over like 30 or 40 views in 10 minutes and it was just spammed with dislikes because it was because it was destiny I don't even remember what I made the video on but like I deleted the video and um the reason I shouted out Nova Sarah Angel in this video is because um he's the one that basically just buckled down got in my face grilled me and said you need to play what you like and stop worrying about dislikes and basically you know just stop being a little B-I-T-C-H. I'm going to try to avoid cursing in this video as much as possible, but at, for the given topic, it's going to be a little bit difficult too, so if I do have a slip up and slur here and there, please forgive me. I'm actually trying to watch my language and the way I talk on, on YouTube just for the sake of professionalism. Like streams, you know, I'll go ham, you know, say whatever. We get wild on my live streams, but on YouTube, you know, I just like to be more professional. And, oh God, we're two minutes in already and I've already just burned you guys' ears off talking about backstory. So, what I wanted to talk about today was the critics on Destiny, the fanboys, just, you know, everything. This whole, you know, cancerous part of Destiny as a whole. And it really sickens me. And the reason I'm honestly making this video is because, um, recently, as you guys know, I run a Discord channel. And in this Discord, I have had several occurrences and like actual crazy debates and arguments break out because of destiny love and hate like since the first one now i'm going to talk about this from two perspectives i'm going to talk about it from the critics perspectives and then i'm going to talk about it from the fanboys perspectives and i'm going to talk about what both sides i think are doing right and wrong here now keep in mind guys this is just you know my opinion i'm not out here to you know to criticize anybody or stuff like that you know step on people's toes because a lot of people that criticize destiny are massive sized youtubers and trust me the last thing i want to do is piss any of these guys off and have them attacking my channel and stuff like that because you know i said oh you know destiny is a cool game and stuff like that uh, trust me that's the last thing i want but anyway like i said like i was saying i'm um, enjoying the gameplay in the background it's actually one of the most intense pvp matches i've had on destiny 2 yet and um i really enjoyed this match it's actually some uh, competitive play and as you guys know i'm not the greatest um fps player in the world and i really suck at um you know like destiny and halo type shooters so uh it's always been a thing so what i want to start by saying is um i was a hu i've been a huge fan of halo like all my life like eventually you know i'm going to get an xbox one again because you know i just love halo that much but one thing me and a few of my other friends always said when we were younger when the original xbox came out and we used to have you know land parties and stuff like that is God, I wish Halo was on PlayStation. I wish I didn't have to go get an Xbox to play Halo. And the funny thing was, right, when I first got my PlayStation 2, my grandmother had got it for me for Christmas. And she had told me that morning she actually had an Xbox purchased for me. But then she realized it was a PlayStation that I wanted. And to this day sometimes, I still kind of kick myself because in a way I... I wish I got that Xbox because I would have been better at Halo. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, uh, so years pass down the line. We get into, you know, the new generations of consoles, PlayStation 3 and stuff like that. Destiny's shown at the first time at E3. 
God, which I don't even I don't even remember what year it was that you know Destiny was like first the first time Destiny was even mentioned at an E3 conference. I want to say like 2010, 12, some somewhere around there. I, I don't know. Forgive me, guys. My day is probably off as hell. But um, the reason the reason for that is uh the reason that that's so that's so important is um because like when that was announced, we finally knew that some type of you know Bungie built halo like game was coming to playstation and i just thought that was you know the most amazing thing you know i always talk to my friends about destiny but like the the game was in the dark for a while and you know and it just got to the point where even some of some close friends of mine just didn't believe what was happening and they thought i had made the whole thing up and i was just like uh dude like <laughs> uh, it was a really discouraging thing and then finally you know at, at one of the e3s you know actual gameplay is shown and all that stuff, they they announced a the beta and stuff like that. And the first time I played Destiny was on PS3, and I just fell in love. It immediately, you know, gave me that Halo, that Halo nostalgia and stuff like that. It felt just like Halo to me. You know, a bit more, a bit more, you know, mechanics added to it. You know, double jumping and all that stuff. Halo's more just, you know, like one leap and kind of low gravity with the slower movement. But for the most part, you know, it felt pretty similar to Halo. It was the closest thing, you know, I was going to get to Halo on PlayStation and you know I was excited you know a lot of people that you know wanted the same wish that I played the game with you know were excited and stuff like that that I grew up with and all was fine in the world until the game actually launched and you know these crazy these crazy criticisms just you know came out um things about you know like um DLC being exploited in the beta and and stuff like that. And let me let me talk about that for a second. And I know a lot of people, you know, this is where a lot of people are going to flag me and stuff like that. But let's talk about betas. Whenever a beta is usually done, it's always the full game limited and brought to your console. Or it's just a chunk literally removed from the full game and brought to your console. That's usually how they are. Like, you ever notice that when you play a, when you have to download a beta, especially now on next gen consoles... You ever notice that they're massive? Like, for example, you down, you play like a Call of Duty beta or something. You get two or three, you only get two or three maps and a handful of game modes. But the beta still takes like anywhere between 18 and 30 gigabytes just for, for that. When, in all reality, when you get the game too, it's around that same size. Like, for example, the Destiny 2, the Destiny 2 beta, it was about, I want to say between 15 and 18 gigabytes. You know, somewhere around there when I, when I had downloaded it. And when I got the, the full game, it was only about, I'm going to say, 10 or 12 gigabytes more. It wasn't too much. It was, wasn't too much more. Like over, you know, a decent chunk of the game was built into that, into that small beta. And one of the biggest criticisms Destiny 1 had back then was somebody had got into, I guess, glitched into a DLC area in the beta. And that's, you know, where the whole Activision greed came thing in. Um, they were selling DLC that was already built into the game and stuff like that. And let me give you guys my take on that. This is just my, my personal opinion. Um, the fact that DLC, the the foundation of a, of a DLC or expansion is built into a game already is a good thing. Especially for, you know, Destiny that's like an MMO shooter hybrid. And the reason for that is because, like... With, with MMOs and these types of games, they always want to, you know, give you stuff that, you know, leads up into that next DLC. Like, for example, say, you know, the the expansion for Destiny, you know, led, in, led into, you know, some secret... It started in some, you know, like, secret crazy room in the tower. And, you know, there was this mystery door always in the tower that you just couldn't open or something like that. Well, somehow, you know, somebody got through it accidentally you know and saw a few things back there like you know pillars or you know or room or you know, just something well that just lets you know that you know there's something in development and coming just because a part of a dlc is you know discovered in a game doesn't mean the whole thing's built and just sitting there from from launch like the game has been you know going through a development process for you know for some time now and when people want to release dlc for a big for big games like these even even mmos like um 
a lot of ones that a lot of ones that I play. Like a lot of times, you know, you can see the areas that you know lead into you know the next big thing that's coming to the MMO. That's that's usually the case. That's how these games usually work with their content. And I necessarily don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I don't think you know we're just being gypped. I don't think you know we're having something built into the game that's you know that's already there and we're just getting charged for it later. I just think that when that happens, development has started on that DLC already. And one thing people want to get out of games is the most content that they can. So the fact that, you know, you know the developers are already working on bringing you more stuff to do for when you get bored. Just to my opinion, I would think that's a good thing. But that's just, you know, that's just how I, how I, personally, how I personally look at it. So, you know, I do think, you know, the critics, the Destiny critics personally, were just a little too, a little dampering, just, you know, a little bit too hard on, on that one fact. I, I think, you know, that was a, that was a little bit, you know, just, just OD to my, OD to my opinion. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is, um, is honestly, you know, some of the, the Destiny fanboys. And honestly, you know, I'm a Destiny fanboy. I'm not, you know, it's crazy as some of the hardcore ones, but I've noticed that there are people, you know, so upset about the criticism this game gets that they will literally tell you to kill yourself, burn in hell, and fight you head on if you mention anything wrong about this game. Now, I'm not going to point out, you know, any names or mention anybody, but I literally had a guy just the other day in my Discord channel literally point out real-life personal flaws of people that I actually know and you know am close to in real life because he was that passionate about making Destiny's raid content sound challenging he took you know flaws that you know these people have that could like um what he had said was uh something about you know like teamwork not listening properly and stuff like that he um he actually criticized real life problems that he mind you he thinks these people have because you know he wanted to make destiny's content just sound that high on a pedestal now here's what i want to get clear to the fanboys when you guys act like this to people because you're just trying to you know defend this game you're making a really passionate community look terrible and cancerous you're not helping you're not defending your game. You're not being honorable. You don't sound cool. You don't sound tough. You sound stupid. And that's just, you know, my honest, my honest, my honest case about it. Like, when this happened, I honestly didn't even say anything. But the amount of disgust that, you know, that was just, you know, in me when, you know, I heard that actually said was just, it, it just, it, it, it baffled me. And I was just like, wow, you are really that crazy about making this game look like it's you know it's the best thing in the world now one thing people have to understand and this is fanboys and critics alone destiny not only is it you know developed by bungie but it's published by activision the makers of call of duty that you know have had a crap reputation for probably the past three or four years now thanks to futuristic movements supply drops and stuff like that and the fact that, you know, their focus is, you know, a one of their biggest focuses is a Halo-like game. And the past three Call of Duties that came out were specialist-oriented and futuristic. Probably just doesn't help this whole situation very much. But I do really find it kind of bad, bad that Activision is involved with Destiny in the first place. Because I honestly think... Destiny would have a better reputation if it was just strictly Bungie. But, um, in all reality, Destiny really isn't as terrible as people, people may think. Like, when it comes to Destiny, how I honestly look at it is an MMO version of Halo with, you know, with, that's, a, that's a bit mechanic heavy. That just gives you the opportunity to, you know, to make your own Master Chief and write your own story. That's pretty much, that's how I've always explained Destiny to people. Like, anyone who knows me, 
will know that's pretty much the exact definition I give people of um I give people of of, De of Destiny. Now Destiny One, I didn't play it through you know its whole life cycle and stuff like that, but I did follow the game and you know play it for you know a good couple years and everything you know just to get you know like a solid background knowledge on Destiny and everything. And um and, and and everything and everything like that. Um, Destiny One. I'm not gonna lie. In the beginning, they made some mistakes. I think the biggest problem with Destiny One was um, well, not even problem. I just think Destiny One focused more on its MMO and RPG MMO and RPG side than its shooter side, because you know it was less it was less storyline. You know, it, it it literally felt like you know. How MMO questing is very bland. It was very bland, you know, pretty empty. There wasn't too much to the stories. All the NPCs were, you know, basically just salespeople and tip givers standing around in the tower. They didn't have much purpose. They didn't have really much meaning till the Taken King. And then, you know, as the expansions came out, you know, they dived a bit more into the lore and stuff like that. And then when the Taken King came, that's when, you know, you saw, you saw Bungie's Halo storytelling side come out. And, you know, that's when Destiny, you know, really started, you know, getting good. Now, for a lot of people, it was too little, too late. And, you know, as you know, if you know, if you watch a lot of Destiny critics, you'll, you'll see that. But Destiny 2 kind of, um, and this is where I think, you know, a lot of critics and stuff like that get their whole Destiny 2 is just, you know, a big DLC of Destiny 1 kind of thing. Because after how Bungie did this... It kind of just does look like, to an extent, you know, that they just, you know, um, continued off of a, off of the trend that actually worked, you know, with the Taken King. Now, honestly, I find Destiny 2 a true sequel. I feel like the storytelling is more intense, and I honestly think the game is built now to favor its shooter side more than its MMO side, which is, you know, a great thing. And I honestly think it has a good balance of both. Like, whenever you run into a new area, the first thing you see is a public event going on and a massive battle. But at the same time, it looks like, you know, a down-to-earth gritty war that would be, you know, a a shooter. And, you know, Destiny 2's, you know, sense of being, you know, a lot more urban and stuff like that. And a lot of the areas looking, you know, more um more Earth-like. And, and the kind of storytelling you would see, like, you know, in a really good Call of Duty campaign. The fact that the NPCs, you know, have a good sense of... um good sense of story and background behind them this time i think it really you know brings something true to life to you know to um to the destiny to destiny series i honestly think destiny 2 was the improvement and game that you know this series needed you know especially for bungie to just say you know hey you know we have not lost our touch since halo that's still there and the fact that you know the game favors its shooter mechanic tells you that hey you know the guys that made halo a really powerful competitive shooter that definitely made a name for itself these guys have not lost their touch at all if you notice you know when you play destiny 2's um uh pvp mode you'll notice that the it definitely favors gunplay more than this time around i think you know anyone that plays destiny 2 you know um is is pretty much pretty much aware of that like me personally you know destiny 2 is a is a shooter I wouldn't mind you know like playing you know all year like every year I buy a shooter you know to fill that to fill that shooter gap well Destiny 2 actually feels like a shooter this time around and I personally you know I really enjoy that about um about Destiny 2 but anyway guys I don't know I just wanted to, um I finally wanted you know to make this video and have this chat because um honestly you know this is a topic I've been wanting you know just to harp on and talk about for a couple years couple years now i didn't know quite the right way to say it but um hopefully you know nobody gets touchy nobody's feelings are hurt after this video and everything and stuff like that i just think you know the i think there's just so much controversy built into this game that the critics and fanboys are literally at war with each other like if you watch youtube a lot of people that criticize destiny and a lot of people that make fanboy videos and you watch the comments and stuff like that you'll get the picture of what i'm saying like it's it's not hard just find somebody who criticizes Destiny or who defends Destiny heavily, look in their comments section of their video and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Like I said, I'm not going to name anyone specific because I really don't want this. This game seems to be a very touchy topic on YouTube and I really just, you know, don't want to be involved with, you know, like any type of YouTube drama or anything like that making a Destiny video. 
But anyway, guys, if y'all enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button for me. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. It's your boy, Tanek127. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till next time, peace out, take care.